Welcome back, hunters. I'm the Survival Vis, and we return to our Picking Bay expeditions with our second half of the weekend. This, the objective for this weekend was basically to get enough GM to be able to work at making the uh, Magpie Goose set up here, or try one, because it's... Oh, Ooh, well, hello. I'll definitely start this episode off with a water buffalo. Thank you. Yeah, we got the GM I wanted for the Magpie Goose set up, so the only other thing we're going to do is try to get the tent set up further into the reserve. And hopefully also get some animals hunted alongside, because I admit last episode, we didn't get that much exactly done. Ground covered? Yes. But not really too much in the way of animals. But it does seem like we might get a little... Jeez, that lightning... I guess the storms are pretty aggressive, given this is supposed to be like Australia and that, so tropical storms... Pretty violent at times. Yeah, let's see if we can start us off with a uh, water buffalo right away. And we do have a few minutes left of the scent eliminator, so I don't have to worry about that too much. Although right now it's a little hard to tell how bad our like uh, heat exhaustion level is. But just to be prepared for it, I think I'll switch that out for that, so that way... If it does get up there a little bit more, we can just take a quick drink and chase it off for a while. Okay. I made a call. Oh. Uh, I don't know if I actually want to go for that, because I think that's just a female. Doesn't look very impressive horn-wise. Yeah, you know what, I think I'll just leave her alone. We'll take another quick look by the river, because, again, last episode, or the very end of it, we got we got a Bantang, and we saw another water buffalo across the way that looked to be not as good as the one from, like, last weekend, which was, ooh, that's nice to see to start, but still decent enough to try going for if we could. Oh, and we do have feral hogs in the area, but I don't think we'll... Yeah, we're not going to worry too much about them. I just want to try to get to the water a bit and then see around. I'm not going to go over the other side, because I think it'd be better if we just stick over here. Let's just try to watch and see if we can find any... No, these are... And these are the tracks from the Bentang we scared off. Okay, you know what, I, you can see in the top left corner that we are pretty bad for our heat. There we go. All the fuzzies aren't so fuzzy anymore. Okay, yeah, so, oh, nope, now I want to keep that out. And we'll switch between the rangefinder and that, and just try running our way this way. Last time we were along the river, we did seem to find that there were more Bentang on this northern bank than to the south. So if we can get more of those, I'd be quite happy. They seem to come in quite a variety of, like, uh... Coat color? No, would it be coat or pelt colors? God, terminology escapes me sometimes. But they have a lot of different patterns to them. Like, some of them are just, as we've seen, a complete orange... Oh. I see a big blob up there, but I can't tell... It's a water buffalo of some kind. Don't know if it's male or female. I just saw it because of, again, the... Ah, uh, the foliage doesn't render in quite right. Oh, or maybe it's not. No, I was just seeing a frond leaf. Oh, maybe it wasn't even there. Okay, well, again, we'll just keep try to make up for the double backing we did, try and get the animals. Okay, slant eliminator's worn off, so I'll need to remember to apply that once we have a promising looking opportunity. Oh, we do have Bantang around. If it's been falling the river, then we might be able to go after it. I don't know if it's crossed, though. 
No, this was going back that way. Okay, a bit odd, but... Um, hard to say. They definitely prefer the water, but it seems like they have a little bit of issue with it. Okay, well, that actually solves where that went off to. Yeah, it's probably a bit of a ways to that spot. It looks like it kind of stays flat between two hills. Holy. Sent eliminator on, please, and thank you. Jeez, frickin' devil horns just poking up out of the... Okay, he knows I'm here. Okay, we gotta check this guy out, like... Talking about water buffalo and the horns being huge. Oh, crap. I don't know if he's better than the one from last weekend or not, but... We'll find out in just a moment here. Like, lord, they grow them big here. Let's see how you stack up. I was not expecting all of a sudden to see this out here. How do you score? Do, 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 do. Oh, if we thought the previous one was a trophy lodge one. Oh, 245. This one is bigger than the other one we got. And it's kind of good because I didn't actually take the other one to the trophy room. I kind of use, uh, depending on what the, like, current leaderboard top is within certain range. But I think this one, I think it's warranted. Uh, do we have something like Reverend? We do. Yeah, let's slide a little over so nothing is blocking that. There we go. And go up a little bit. Oh, that's a beautiful one right there. Completely by surprise, too. Oh, and actually, before I forget... There we go. Oh, ho. So, maybe that makes up for last episode not quite getting a lot of animals with getting something like that so quickly into this one. And I do gotta admit, now that I'm kind of, I'm getting a little bit better with depth perception. Not so much as, like, I can tell how far away something is, but I feel like I can get a little closer to animals than I thought. So because of that, that lets me start pulling off better shots like that right there, which managed to take it down quickly and easily. I do think, though, because of the scope calibration, if you have enough time to get the reverse draw leveled up, that'll let you go for longer range shots than the 10 point does with its current scope. Although there's probably also a... I don't know if this is the only scope for the crossbow, if there might even be one that's better for, like... Oh. Yeah, the Bantang are surprisingly skittish compared to... Some of the other animals. But, if that's the case, how are we doing? Uh, kind of doing a little bit of a weird progress, but at least we are still going in the same general direction I want to go. So we're going to resume that, because that's probably the Bantang scared out. Got a lot of tracks here. Yeah, these are pretty old, though. Oh, and actually, we're going back down around, along the river. Maybe I'll try to stay in this almost, like, in-between area. Like, not quite along the river, but not quite into the hills. Just kind of in this spot. And see what kind of activity goes on here. But, man... It really is only dumb luck that I'm getting animals that are, like, that good scoring. 
There's nothing you can really do to increase your chances, I believe. It's just luck of the draw of what spawns in on the hunt for you. And yeah, even an idiot like me can get some nice score on Anvil. So if you guys are unsure, just remember, every time you go out, there's always a chance. But with that met, I would like to, again, just try to get more of these Banting. They are a bit more skittish. So I'll have to remember, once I'm kind of within range, to be lower to the ground as I'm trying to approach. And they have... Oh, yeah, even this guy fled. And there's nothing you can use to bring Bantang in. They are like the water buffalo we're in. No calls, no lures. And they're just doing their thing. If you really want to go after them, I'd probably suggest using, like, the 300 caliber. Because that way you don't have to worry about being as cautious on approaching them, like, with me with the crossbow. It really does seem to be, like, for the weapon that will give you the best mileage throughout the Hunter Classic is a 300 caliber rifle. There's just so many animals it's ethical for. It's great for long-distance shots. It will just pull you a lot. Oh, I see somebody with socks up ahead. There's another Bantang. Uh, I'm not sure if we're in range to be able to spot it, but I think it's a male with how the horns are a little more pronounced like that. Yeah, it is a male. Okay, you know what? He is directly in the path we want to go. Oh. Yeah, we... We are definitely in Bantang territory. Oh. Something was just to our right, but I don't know what it was. Oh, Feral Hawk. Ooh, that could have been bad. God, I remember from, uh, I think it was Siberian Expeditions? Or was it something else? There was one carnivores game I played where it was almost like the something that shouldn't have seen like it was as like hunter seeking as it was. Always got aggressive and came after you. I think it might have I think it might have been Siberian Expeditions. Let's see if I can stay low and get a bit closer. This'll just give me an idea of like how Easily the band tank can pick us up. Yeah, see, I'll have to remember that, because they are very cautious animals. Which is a little surprising, given you don't have a way to, like, bring them into you. Yeah, so the band tank, you can't really get within 50 meters of them. Without them kind of getting skittish. Or I should say within 60 meters of crouching towards them. Let's just head up here and see what that call... Oh, there it is. Um, might be a fe... Uh, you know what? I have no way to tell unless I spot it. Unfortunately, we're seeing the back end. Oh, and it's... Another animal is kind of bugging into a tree. I mean, it'd be pretty helpful for us if it stays like that. Let me just try to see if I can spot it first. I mean, females probably still do give you a little bit of GM score, but... I'll try to keep things a little bit more sporting and ethical and make sure it's... go only, only for the males if we can. And it's a male. And we got man. Yeah, that's who we want. I 
We just gotta figure out the best approach for him. I don't wanna go through the water because I think that would make more noise than just sticking up where we are. I kinda wish he would just like, oh, actually I think he might be doing what I was hoping is he'll just kind of follow along the bank for a bit. I'm going to go low and see. Is he going to keep coming this way, or is he going to... He's going to stick right about there. Way too far out for the crossbow at this range. Yeah, it looks like he's smiling. I think this is far enough out I can just crouch... Oh. See, they do like these almost loops they get stuck in. It's almost like he's trying to cross the water, can't, so then the AI corrects it to go out of the water, but then it'll turn around and try going in again. Yeah, like, he's kind of doing that again. Almost reminds me of, like, the Roombas in a way, where if they hit the wall, turn, go, wall, turn. Okay, so if I keep up along this for a little bit, we should be able to get in at least to the 40 meter. We just gotta be patient and it should pay off. Yeah, and now he's going to probably go back out. Just try to stay low, get a little bit closer in. I don't know if he's leaving the area now or he's going to cycle back once more. Okay, I might have to wait a moment to see, because I can't really get a good view with all the reeds that are here now. I'm going to try heading up this way for a little bit higher up on the bank and try to see. Slowly, slowly make our way up. I think as long as I don't, like, move as I'm crouched, he won't target me or won't really pick me up as much. I think I should be alright if I wanted to crouch at this spot and take a look. Yeah, we're slowly closing the distance. It's just because he keeps on wanting to go a little bit out that I haven't been able to quite close it enough. But I think if I can get up to this next little group of trees, we'll be within that 40 meters that we'd like. I'd also probably advise to stick to whatever the scoping calibrations are for when you're trying to hunt. And just because that way you reduce the uh, variability of where shots might wander off to, or the deviation to some things. Like, I'm sure there are people who could easily use this crossbow and probably get accurate shots out to double the... Oh, crap. Okay, I think he's right on the other side of this one tree ahead of us. That's why I don't see him at all. There are people who can easily shoot up to, like, double the crossbow scope that's on there. I don't know where he is. Did he go all the way up there? No? What? 
the heck? Looks like he just vanished on us. I don't see him out in the water. I didn't hear anything like him running off. Oh, why did you go all the way up the hill now? You are proven to be a real pain in the rear. I just want to get him now as a sh matter of fact that I can get him. You see, keeps somehow managing to be always in a spot that we just can't quite get him, but just enough that it feels like a little bit and you can. Like case points right now, he's behind that tree. There you are. See, this is what I'm talking about. It's almost like it specifically knows. No, don't keep going uphill. I'll have to probably take that. There we go. He's trying to do it again to just get into that spot where he wouldn't have been able to. But just a nice long shot and that put him right down. So let's go snag him and see how he scores. Probably not a very good one, but to be honest, it's just good to have one put down. So where are you? There you are. You gave me quite a little bit of a workaround to get you. And how does he score? Yeah, only 25. Not really... Oh. Well, we got something else nearby. I think it was a Sombar or a Rusa deer. But yeah, these guys have a lot of different colors that they can kind of come in. There we are. Uh, probably too late to pick up on the call of whatever that was. And unfortunately that sidetracked me quite a bit from where I want to be. So I'm going to try to run us more the direction I want to go. Maybe even... Uh, no, I still think like that might be the best spot. So maybe we'll try going for there. Just so that way, if I really want to go in the marsh, we can go right there, we can come back this way, we can go up. It's just a spot that has good access to a lot of the areas around it, which is a great place to have, like, a tent set up. So we'll just go and see how that does. And then, yeah, next weekend we'll try the little bit of water fouling. I don't know how it'll go. So if the first episode is really a bust... Maybe I'll just take you guys in on a quick little thing to show off what the tutorial is like. But yeah, it really feels weird that, like, it decides to say, Okay, here's one in your inventory. Go set it up. And while we're doing... And then while you read this, okay, next step now there are 24 all around that spot. Like, it just really feels like sometimes the Hunter Classic will run you a lot more expensive than Call of the Wild. Well, actually, that's pretty much a fact that you'll get a lot more run for... Oh, right. Right ahead of us. I'll take a walk and see. No, well, that might be it right there.
But yeah, I think for the sakes of all things, I do like how much more like uh, challenging and realistic Classic is. But it will just cost you a lot of time or money to just really do stuff with it. Oh, I got a Bantang over there. Uh, nothing too impressive with that one. I almost think that's a female. Yeah, that's a female. Okay, so it looks like the females almost have like more of a slender build and neck to them. Where the males are a little bit more larger, chonky. So that's how you can tell them apart visually, I think. Oh, I might have actually just scared her off, too, so even the females might be pretty skittish. I'm kind of surprised how skittish they are of an animal, like... Even taking away the... like, no way to lure them in. You'd think with them having size, they might not be as large as the water buffalo are, but you'd think they'd be a little bit more... ...confident with their sizing. Like, I don't know what would really be able to, like, be predator to them, aside from, like, saltwater crocodiles or that from the water. I can't really think of Australia having that many, like, large natural predators on it. Uh, maybe wild dogs or dingoes, but, again, I still feel like with their size, that it'd take either a very aggressive pack of dogs or a lot of them. It just kind of feels weird that an animal is that skittish with how big it is. Okay, you know what? I probably have... The other Bantang is probably spooked. But it looks like we're pretty close to that spot I had in mind. So we should be able to reach that in just a minute or two. And then we can set ourselves up with a tent. Oh, yeah, that was probably the Bantang that called and I had seen from a distance. Oh, actually, hang on. Got something down there. I think that's another female. Again, it looks like the head's a little bit longer and slender. Yeah, that is. Yeah, we'll leave her be, because our destination is just up this way. Uh, oh. I think we should be okay. We should just slide down this without much trouble. There is sort of like a fall damage in the game, though, I'm pretty sure. That's just one, though, I think it's more if you go running off a cliff, you're going to encounter it more so than just, like, sliding down a pretty steep slope. Yeah, I think if I were to go for more Banting, I'd probably take the 300 caliber with me. Just because it trivializes so much of, like, trying to deal with these animals. Nope. Oh. There is a sambar. Uh, you know what, let me just see what this little spot is supposed to be like up ahead. Plant the tent down. And then maybe we'll just see if we can get that sambar as like the last animal of the episode. I don't know, this area just kind of looks like it was meant for something. It just looks pretty flat. I don't see any topography lines. It has pretty easy access up and down. I 
And it's not too far off from the river, I don't think. Oh yeah, no, it's not far off at all. So, I think I see a little spot to place the tent down. Yeah, maybe right here in the shade, so that way we're not roasting alive. Okay. Oh, come on. Anywhere around here should work. There we go. Okay, tent is now placed. We have our new place set up here. Uh, quite a few tracks from that Sambar deer that called out too. I'll just go out and see if I can spot it from afar or not. Um, don't know if I want to go for another water buffalo, but it wouldn't hurt just to try and see, I guess. I just want to try to see if I could find that sambar that called out. And try to get a better idea of what, like, a good-sized one looks like. Because the only sambar I've gotten so far have all been pretty low-scoring. I think they've been under... Uh, 30 GM for what you get as a turnout. So I'd kind of like to see if I could just spot a larger scoring one to get an idea of what the antler configuration looks like. Oh, and there's mission completed. So we've definitely gotten enough GM for... Oh, fleeing. Okay, yeah, I don't think we're going to come across it. No, actually, maybe we will. Oh, no, that's a water buffalo. That's not a sambar. Oh, that's a female, too, I think. So it seems like the bantang and the water buffalo have the same... Uh, ...sort of thing that distinguishes male from female. I don't really want to get her on us. And I think the Sambar probably fled off, considering the tracks we found. Okay, good. That wasn't like a provoke call, that was just a general call. Yeah, I think we'll have to end this episode here. I don't really... I think I'll save the ammo, try to be more sporting and not go after the females of the species. But yeah, overall, not too bad of an episode. We got quite a bit of progress made, tent is set up, an amazing water buffalo that even did better than the other one we got. And we should be all prepped for next weekend to try a bit of waterfowling. Don't know how to go, but we'll just try and see. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this episode of the Hunter Classics Pick Bean Bay Expeditions. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to give a like, and if you have any comments, tips, or tricks, be sure to in the comments right down below. And until I see you in the next video, hunters and survivors, please remember, as always, to take care, stay alive, and happy hunting.